Hi, I'm Ed Muschietti from Control Specialties. Steam pressure reducing valves, which are commonly used throughout steam systems, can always be a source of problems. The biggest one of which is when a valve fails, how do you determine what's wrong with the valve? There are a number of manufacturers that make pressure reducing valves, and we're just showing you very quickly some of the representative types, which range from Spence to Spirex Arco, to Armstrong, to Watson McDaniel, and there's many, many other brands. Steam pressure reducing valves are made up of two components. A pilot valve, which is the brains of the valve and really determines when the valve is to be open and closed, and then the main valve itself, which is essentially the amplifier, which delivers the large volumes of steam required of a pressure reducing valve. Let's take a few minutes and show you a quick technique on troubleshooting a diaphragm operated pressure reducing valve. Before we get into the particulars, maybe we make an additional comment. Two items that should always be installed ahead of every pressure reducing valve are a pipeline strainer to keep rust and trash and so on out of the valve because you've got small passages inside there. And you should always install a drip trap of every pressure reducing valve, again, to prevent condensation from getting inside the valve, which again will create rust and trash and debris, which will cause the valve to fail. The actual valve itself is always going to generally be made up of two parts. The pilot is the brains of the pressure reducing valve and the main valve is the brawn. The pilot and the main valve are connected by tubing. So if we can find a way to separate these two and find out that we've got a pilot failure and main valve failure, we've saved ourselves an awful lot of work. The first thing you need to do is turn off the supply of steam valve, shut off any valves downstream and make sure that you bleed off all the pressure because we're going to actually get inside this valve and see what's going on. So we certainly don't want to damage or hurt ourselves by live steam burning us. You want to then take the adjustment on the pilot and turn it up so this spring is completely loose and relaxed. And then take a wrench and let's remove the copper tubing. Now I've cheated here and already loosened these up so I'm going to pull it off. In doing this, what we've done now is actually separated these two pieces of equipment which allow us to see whether we've got a main valve problem or we've got a pilot problem. What you want to then do is make sure that there's no tension on the pilot spring itself. Open up the steam valve a small amount and allow steam to repressurize the valve. If the main valve has got a problem in terms of being failed open, we're going to see some steam, or actually probably quite a bit of it, blowing out of this balance port, which is going to be on the downstream side of the valve. If when you turn steam back on the valve and you see steam coming out of here, then we've got a main valve which is stuck open or maybe have some debris in it or has had some other mechanical failure, you know you need to go to that point. As far as the pilot is concerned, with no tension on the spring, we should see no steam flow coming out of these two ports. What we want to now do is turn the adjustment screws down on the pilot spring, which begins to compress it, and you'll see a large volume of steam pass out. Take the tension back off, the steam flow should shut off, and do that a number of times to make sure that the pilot is not sticking or sequencing properly. You should see very little steam flow, literally less than a puff of cigarette smoke, coming out of here when this is shut off theoretically should see none. The other possible area that can cause the valve to malfunction, and this will depend upon the brand, is that you'll always have two bleed orifices installed somewhere in this tubing, which typically are about the size of a paper clip hole. So you want to check those with a flashlight and make sure that those holes are clear. Paper clip is a great way to clear them out, make sure that they're clean. Make your repairs on the valve, put it back together again, and put it back in operation, and hopefully you've solved your problem. Thank you for your time.